All right. So I'm going to be making a uh, and show you how to make a realistic uh, star field. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna use real life values. So, um, make a new Blender file, AX, delete everything, um, set your render engine to cycles, GPU compute, 0. 0.00, you don't have to do these settings, but I find they work the best, uh, set your light paths, unless you have something else in your scene. Uh, set all of these to zero. Um, set your perfor for performance. Set this to like 1,024 persistent data. Um, don't need to change any of those. Don't need to change anything in the volumes. Okay, so that's all good. Go to your uh, shading tab. All right. And clear out all the extra windows if you don't know how to do that. Um, well, when you have another window over here, just pretend it's like the uh, driver's window. It wouldn't be, but pretend it is for now. You right-click, uh, join areas, and then join it that way. For here, it'd be the same thing. You would join. I'm not going to do this one. Uh, right-click cancels an action, by the way, if you don't know that. Um, but if I wanted to close this window right here, I would drag down and click. But I'm not going to do that. Okay, so let's go to our world shading, get rid of the background. And actually, we'll do that one later. Grab a Voronoi texture and plug distance into surface. Control T on the Voronoi texture. Um, also, if you want snapping inside of the shader editors, there's this little button right here. Turn that on and it does this for you. You do not need a mapping node, and if you delete it and don't want to have to plug this in manually again, then um, if you just click Control X, then it gets rid of that connection. But we, it didn't. It doesn't matter which one you do for this anyways because we need the object coordinates okay i'm going to set the scale to like 128 for now and then um oh yeah also to get these when you click control t you need the uh node wrangler add-on so you go edit preferences and every tutorial ever will tell you this by the way but uh, oops not how you spell that node wrangler I cannot spell today node wrangler right there okay so texture coordinate the Voronoi texture hooked up to that and then you want a math node click on this and just click P to switch it to power plug this in here and set this to like 50 oh wait there's one thing we got to do before that just grab an invert node and plug it right there and then grab a power and a multiply multiply this by here which one so we're gonna do first blue okay so multiply that by like a thousand twenty four and to the power of like, uh, well, I don't know, to the power of 50, maybe. And it's maybe a bit much. Power of 75. 
power of 100. Okay, yeah. Use a power of 100. Multiply it by 1024. And then plug that into the strength of an emission node into the surface of the world output. And then up here, grab a black body node and plug that into the color. Um, so what the black body node does is it uses uh, color temperatures in, in Kelvin for the for the colors like um i think if if i'm correct um the the, the sky on like a sunny day it would be like i think it's like 17000 kelvin for its color temperature which is bluish it's a bit hard to see here but like kind of like that Uh, for blue blue stars, uh, their approximate color temperature is 25,000 Kelvin. And if we plug that into here, yeah. Okay, so those are blue stars. So if you um, highlight all of these nodes and click Shift P and then F2, the function two key, not F and two. Um, label this just blue stars actually maybe for this multiply value do like 760 or something like that um, okay and then grab and add shader and just duplicate this bring it underneath here plug that into the add shader oh also switch these two to a uh, 4d and then grab a math and a value keep this at add actually no do do multiply yeah Bring that down there, bring this up here a little bit. Okay, so just put that there and plug that value into the W. And this will be our seed value. So multiply this by, I don't know, five, sure. Or no, I think add would actually be better because if we have something, yeah, okay. And then, um, put an add node down here as well into the W here and we're gonna set this one to like 512 actually 1024 maybe for, for the Voronoi texture that is and for a multiply like 1024 with 125 power mm, 150 for a power node 1024 for a multiply and then the approximate color temperature for white stars, it looks like it is um, about 10,000 Kelvin. And yeah, you can, I mean, there's definitely a difference. This is a lot less saturated. That one's a lot more blue. And we plug that into there. And now when we change that, value it'll give us different star seeds yep looks good okay add another add shader oh wait um also rename this one by just clicking on the frame right here click f2 and just rename that to oops, white stars okay now um oh to duplicate it and keep it hooked up to this value node right here, Control Shift and D. Let's just change up these values a little bit. Set this to like 150 or something. Okay, uh, for yellow stars. Let's do like 512, actually no, maybe even 256. 
with a power of like a hundred and multiply of like 512. And for a black body node for this, we're going to use 6,000. And you can already see some of that. So it, you, you can't zoom into world shaders. But if you grab a camera, click zero to go into the camera view, you can zoom in through here and you can you can start to see the, here if I set this to like five it'd be red. Um so that's for yellow. And maybe set set the exponent to like seventy five. Mm, that's a bit much. 125 should be fine. Actually, no, 100. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to turn on one more setting. If you go to your output properties here and click render region, and we hop back in here, it'll only render what the camera can see, none of the garbage out there. So. Okay, so let's rename this to um, yellow stars and control shift D to duplicate that again. And let's just bring these down here so it's easier to see. Add shader, emission, and these ones should be about 4,000 Kelvin. Let's just pick another random number for this one, like 634. Doesn't have to be that, just random number. But you can see it's uh, those ones right here. And this will multiply by like 768 and do like 120 for these ones. the power of like 125 multiply of 1024 starting to come together and then our red stars oh wait uh we gotta name these ones first these are what our orange ones yeah, so orange stars and then control shift d to duplicate okay right Control shift d to duplicate that. Duplicate this, add shader. Oops. Plug this emission into the add right here. Switch this to friggin' any number possible. <laughs> um, for red, should probably go with like 75. The power of like 75 as well, I guess. Yeah, for this we'll just do like 2048. Okay, and our temperature for this one should be 3000 Kelvin. And I know it looks a bit odd at the moment. Here, let's, let's just find some good values for this, like 115. That looks nice. Okay, so we've got our basic star field. Now we just have to add like the nebula gases in. Uh, so if you grab a noise texture with object coordinates, there we go. Set the scale to like one roughness to like 0.4 and a detail of 10. And then plug the color, not the factor, color into the vector. And then the noise texture factor, actually here, let's set that to like 5 and the roughness to 0.6. Here, if we preview this, you can kind of see what it's doing. Let's just drag these down a little bit. If I grab a um, math power, put this here, maybe to the power of 15, too much. Okay, power of 10. Yeah, you can kind of see what it's doing now. Actually, power of 15, multiply by 10. Plus 
plug this into an emission node and then for this do like 0.5 maybe you can go as low as you want but this is going to be your main brightness so if you want you can just make a value call this brightness gases or whatever plug that into your multiply it'll control the brightness of them it's pretty self-explanatory let's do a brightness of like 0.5 i found to look it looks pretty good um and grab another black body node i mean here you're allowed to take like an you you have artistic liberty over the, the colors and whatnot and you can you know if you want you could do uh here let's just increase this a little bit you could do crazy stuff like that right but um i'm just going to use a black body node with a temperature of like 7500 uh it's a bit maybe a bit higher about 15000 yeah, so it's like nice and blue okay um so we've got our oops we've got our nebula and our stars how do we mix them uh just another add shader and plug the nebula emission into the add right there and that is a bit strong 0.25 should probably be fine and that's it that is how to make a realistic star field in a uh, blender and with the nebulas um increasing the scale here increases the amount of like little division no, not divisions but like I don't know the term for it, but like the, the amount of little pieces of gases basically there are. Um, you can increase the detail, you can probably imagine what that does. Don't need to explain that to you. Um, also, if you set this to 4D as well, and grab this value node up here. You can plug this into the W here. Let's just set the seed to like five or something, or maybe two or whatever you find looks best with the nebula in camera. That one looks cool, 5.79. Um, yeah, and uh, you can turn this into a node group as, as well. So if you were to just click Control G while well, you have all of that selected, you can make an input for this, your, your seed value, and your gas brightness. All right, that wraps up the video have fun experimenting with it and uh let me know if i should change anything in the uh, comments if you are a nerd and know any any uh any more information about uh realistic stars or star fields <laughs>